Well, good morning and uh, welcome to uh, church this morning. Uh, welcome to those who are online as well. I've got to look at the camera and smile to them. Welcome to you. Um, it is great to be back. And um, what a way to start as well, isn't it? Hosanna on this Palm Sunday. And um, we welcome one another, but we also welcome that Jesus will be moving among us this morning and meet with us. Um, just uh, to just share a few notices with you. Um, firstly, there is children's groups this morning, uh, but it will only be for the seedlings and the rise. Uh, the rooted group are going to stay in. You should have got a goodie bag, apparently, that was been handed out. Did you get a goodie bag? Yep. Uh, so the, Paul has asked if the two other groups uh, can come to the middle uh, door in the hall, and she'll meet you there. Uh, just to say as well, tonight is our church prayer meeting. Um, as a church, gathering together once a month, um, just for an hour, can we encourage you just to come and join us? Uh, we're going to meet for worship, uh, just for 10, 15 minutes, and then we uh, go round uh, some tables, there'll be some prayer pointers uh, to pray for uh, the world, uh, our nation, the church, and individuals as well. It's been really good. The last couple we've had have been been fantastic and it is the heartbeat of a church to meet together and to pray we know we pray individually but meeting together is very special when we join together um next week is easter well i thought there'd be a few people enthusiastic at least about the eggs isn't it okay next week you're going to get easter eggs oh i can see the enthusiasm uh, but on Good Friday uh, in Mansfield, we've always had uh, a, a, a March of Witness, but it's going to be slightly different this uh, year. It's going to be going from St. John's Church, which is on St. John's Street, so you should remember that. And that's going to be at 1pm. So uh, there'll be a very short time, as there was uh, in previous years, together for worship. And then we'll be going down, carrying the cross into the marketplace and uh, I hope there'll be a very short act of worship down there. Um, and then we'll be walking back to St. John's. Uh, then there'll be a finish to that service there and refreshment served after. Uh, next Sunday morning um, is Easter Sunday and we're doing baptisms. Um, apparently, when the church first started, they actually did baptisms on Easter Sunday. So it's, what an amazing day, Resurrection Day. Uh, to, to do baptisms. So please do pray for those that are being baptised um, that it, as they prepare uh, for that. Next Sunday evening as well, we're, we're just having another service in the evening. It's uh, Easter praise. Uh, so there'll be lots of uh, praise songs and hymns and uh, possibly communion on that night as well, just as we celebrate Easter. over here so morning some of you have got palm leaves palm branches on on your seats praise is rising hearts are turning to you so these are for you to praise with and worship i hope they don't fall to pieces but hey ho do you know they symbolize a sign of joy praise triumph peace victory eternal life that's what that is representing it's that's what it's a symbol of joy and praise. I think uh, that sums a lot of it up really, doesn't it? Um, also the act of waving them, I mean, you know, can I, I started thinking about this and I don't know whether how many saw Jesus Christ superstar or not in the day. Uh, some of it was questionable, but there was a song there, what's the buzz, what's happening? And they kept singing that, what, what's the buzz, what's happening sort of thing. And I started thinking about that, I mean, about being there and that, that electric atmosphere and excitement have we got any of that here today yes. have we thanks thanks steve and that's why why i've symbolized these uh they were to, when they were thrown to the ground in front of jesus it symbolized i don't know whether you know this a king or a conqueror was approaching mm -hmm. a king and a conqueror so if you look at the words of what this palm branch mean joy praise triumph peace victory eternal life thrown in front of a king and a conqueror. Isn't Jesus all of those things? As Jesus rose into Jerusalem, they called his name, Jesus, and they shouted, Hosanna. Can I hear any Hosannas? Hosanna! 
thank you. Uh, both of them come from the same root meaning. Does anybody know what that is? It's to save. To save. So when we're shouting Jesus and Hosanna, he hears that cry to save us. Hosanna. And he did save us, didn't he? Um, so really, that's my challenge for you today. When you're looking or waving this palm branch to remember that Jesus, Hosanna, he's the one who saves us. We just sang that. Jesus is the King of Kings. Jesus is the one who conquered sin and died for me. Joy, praise, peace, triumph, victory, eternal life and being saved. So as we go into worship, please wave those banners and remember you're praising with joy, praising with peace, you're praising with triumph. You're saying thank you for saving me in the victory that he is king of kings and he conquered the devil and sin and death. Oh, you can hear me. Yeah, why well, don't you stand and let's get your palms ready. I want to see them waving in the air as we raise our hallelujahs. Okay.
yours forever. It's love and just forever. It's love and just forever. It's love and just forever. Forever. It's love and just forever. It's love and just forever. It's love and just forever. children and your people to go out now so I will pray for them as they go Lord I just pray that you will be with our children, our young people and our leaders as they go out to the groups, Lord will you teach them more about your love Lord your amazing love pray that in the name of Jesus, Amen Your love endures forever, from the rising to the setting sun. Lord, your love endures forever. Lord, we, we can't imagine how deep your love is for us, your Father's love for us, that you'd even send your Son here to this world, into this world, to die in our place. What amazing love is that, Lord? Amazing love. Is love and just forever? Is love and just forever? Is love and just forever? Forever. Forever. Listen to a thousand tongues 
presence. Thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you for your plan, Lord. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for sending your spirit. Lord, we worship you. Thank you for your love. Help us to grasp how high and deep and long and wide is your amazing love. We worship you. Oh, man. Let's just uh, continue as we pray. Lord God, we just thank you this morning that you are the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Lord, we thank you that uh, you sit upon a throne. You are high, you are lifted up, but yet, Lord, you, your heart is broken. Lord, for this world, Lord, that we can look at and wonder what on earth's happening, that we can look upon and wonder why, and yet we know, Lord, that you weep over this world, Lord. So we just pray today, Lord, we continue to lift up at the places, Lord, that break your heart, where all you wanted to do is to pour out love, Lord, for people to know you, for people to live to your ways. And yet, Lord, we see so often, Lord, the damage that's done when we reject you, our creator. We pray for Ukraine, Lord, and for Russia. Lord, we pray for peace. We pray, Heavenly Father, for that you will just work through those people who will stand for peace. Give wisdom, Lord, to those leaders, Lord, that are involved. And we just pray, Lord, especially today, Lord, for those that mourn. As we see on our screens, Lord, some of the dreadful things, Lord, and know that the suffering is just so deep. We pray, comfort those that mourn. 
We pray for those countries that are around that area that are being flooded with refugees. We thank you, Lord, for the signs of your kingdom, the signs of your goodness at work, Lord, with the welcome, with the provision, Lord, with the care, Lord, that's being provided. We thank you, Lord, that your hands, Lord, are being enacted, Lord, in every single act of love. And we pray, Heavenly Father, Lord, for a a change, Lord, with some of the governments, Lord, and the way, Lord, that refugees are being treated, Lord, been able to move on. We thank you, Lord, that, that there are some here now in our nation. But we do pray, Heavenly Father, for that process, Lord, to to work a little bit quicker. Lord, that these people's needs might be met. And we pray for those that have come, Lord, that they will find a welcome. They will find peace, Lord. And amongst all the trauma, Lord, that they probably faced fleeing, Father, that that you will bring healing. And we just pray, Heavenly Father, for those who we know have needs this morning. We know that your love breaks over them. Let's pray especially for Craig and his sister this morning, Lord. Yes. Lord, dealing with uh, just the un- unfathomable, Lord, why? But Lord, we know, Lord, that you are able to bring peace. You're able to bring comfort. You're able to bring hope. And we pray that over this family in your name. And we pray for ourselves, Lord. Lord, as your people, dearly beloved in this place, we pray, Heavenly Father, help us, Lord, to clear away the trivial things, to leave behind, Lord, the the things that hold us back. Lord, that we might truly be filled with all of the fullness of you, Lord, and, Lord, might be shining witnesses to our friends, to our neighbours. Lord, that we might live to your kingdom, we might show your kingdom to those that you, we, we meet. We might show that love to those that we meet. And we ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Morning. The reading... This morning is taken from Matthew, chapter 21, verses 1 to 14. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell him that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfil that was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, see your kingdom, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as they had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Jesus entered the temple area and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him at the temple and he healed them. Amen. Amen.
Bible says, my king is the king of the Jews. He's the king of Israel. He's the king of righteousness. He's the king of the ages. He's the king of heaven. He's the king of glory. He's the king of kings. And he's the Lord of lords. That's my king. I wonder, do you know him? My king is a sovereign king. No means of measure can define his limitless love. He's enduringly strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's imperially powerful. He's impartially merciful. Do you know him? He's the greatest phenomenon that has ever crossed the horizon of this world. He's God's son. He's a sinner's savior. He's the centerpiece of civilization. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. He is the loftiest idea in literature. He's the highest personality in philosophy. He's the fundamental doctrine of true theology. He's the only one qualified to be an all sufficient Savior. I wonder if you know him today. He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes and he saves. He strengthens and sustains. He guards and he guides. He heals the sick. He cleanses the lepers. He forgives sinners. He discharges debtors. He delivers the captives. He defends the feeble. He he blesses the young, he serves the unfortunate, he regards the age, he rewards the diligent, and he beautifies the meek. I wonder if you know him, he's the key to knowledge, he's the wellspring of wisdom, he's the doorway of deliverance, he's the pathway of peace, he's the roadway of righteousness, he's the highway of holiness, he's the gateway of glory. Do you know him? Life is matchless, his goodness is limitless, his mercy is everlasting, his love never changes, his word is enough, his grace is sufficient, his reign is righteous, and his yoke is easy, and his burden is light. I wish I could describe him, for yet he's indescribable, he's incomprehensible, he's invincible, he's irresistible. Amen. I love the enthusiasm of this church. It's great. Oh, that's my king. Well, I want to ask you that question this morning. It's that who is your king is the first question. And what is he like? Do you know him? Because this passage is really focused upon those two questions. Who is the king and what is he like? And uh, do we really know him? Is the king Jesus that we know, is that the real one? Or is that just the, the one that we have, the image that we have in our own minds? Um, and really what you'll find um, as we go through some of this passage is that the people seem to have got it sus that they know who Jesus is. They know he's the king. And yet you'll find that their hearts are far, far away from that understanding of who Jesus really is. I guess, uh, as we know, the story folds out, you know, within the week... They were shouting, crucify him. That was the one they welcomed as the king. I don't know whether you have uh, ever had that feeling of disappointment when you had big expectations for something. I guess we've all had that, haven't we? We, we used to be like that over Mansfield Town Football Club. Do you remember those days? If you ever went to a match, you went with the high expectation that finally Stags were going to win a game. But by 45 minutes, you realise that that was not going to happen, that you were going to be uh, disappointed. 
But I can't really use that as an illustration now because stags are up for promotion. And we know that we're going to be promoted and we will not be disappointed. But I have to say, um, there is something that I can illustrate this with and that's my walk in Scotland. I left here full of high expectation of something wonderful, of getting up all the mountains, seeing all the beautiful views, and my heart was pounding with the excitement. And I expected to arrive um, in Fort William with a pair of bagpipes doing the Highland dance because I was so happy and so amazed and just really expecting. But what did I find instead? Two days in, my feet swelled up like balloons so that I couldn't walk. I had to come home on a bus. I was stood for about 45 minutes at the side of a road in the middle of nowhere, waiting for a bus that may or may not come. And every vehicle that went past, it was pouring with rain, and I just got splashed by every single vehicle that came. I sat on the bus dripping uh, with water. Fortunately, it was a two-hour drive, so I was dry by the time I got to the other end. But the disappointment was quite intense, I have to be honest with you. I expected something great, but what I got um, really let me down. But, you know, even in that story, there is truth. And the truth is this, is that even in when it looks like defeat, there is actually sometimes the greater victories that take place. And as they say, no experience is a bad experience it's just an experience and I have to say that's true but you know this passage breaks down really into three sections and it's really just about the king and the first section really is about the king who was foretold Um, and as you read it it says when Jesus drew near verse uh, one to Jerusalem um, he had been to Jerusalem before this was not the first time that Jesus had been Jerusalem and yet In this timing, he decided that he was going to enact prophecy. Things that had been told all the way through the Bible that were going to happen, Jesus chooses this particular one. He tells them, doesn't he, to go into the village to find a donkey and and bring it to him. And he says, if anybody says anything to you, just tell them that he needs it. And then verse 4, it says these words, it says, and all this was done that it might be fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet and then it tells us the verse that particular verse it says tell the daughter of zion that your king is coming to you lowly sitting on a donkey a colt the foal of a donkey and you see this was known all the way through through the jewish people they knew that their scriptures and yet that's not the only scripture that we've got. You see, because God has always had a plan, hasn't he? Yeah. He's always had a schedule of timings in which things will happen. And as we get to Easter, that is a crucial timing in God's plan and God's clock, if you like. The whole plan is that God desires to be with man. God desires to be with you, each one of you, in a personal way. It's not that we're kind of waiting for, you know, to get to heaven. God desires to be with us. And he's been working all through history to make that happen. Um, and, you know, sometimes it, it may appear to us that it's, that it's not happening. But yet God has got his time and his schedule and his clock that's ticking And we are part of that story. You and me are part of that story. If you believe in Jesus Christ today, you are part of that story. God's desire is to be your king and for you to know him. That's That's as simple as it is. But I wonder this morning, do you know him? As we look through some uh, some of the scriptures, don't we, that maybe the Jewish people would have known Uh, we think about who is the king Isaiah chapter 6 for unto us a child is born and a son is given and the government will be on his shoulder that's a king and his name will be called wonderful counselor mighty God everlasting father prince of peace and of the increase of his government there will be no end it's eternal that's the king right there 
Um, another uh, scripture that really I just want to draw your attention to because it may actually be linked into Palm Sunday is Daniel's prophecy. Daniel spoke um, and he was told about what would happen to the people of Israel, to Jerusalem, and what the point was. And an angel, he was praying over it because they were in exile. They were due to be released. They'd been in there for 70 years nearly. And Daniel was praying, when is this going to happen, Lord? And that it, that God sent an angel to him and he told him this prophecy of 70 weeks or as it's understood, 70 years, 70 times 7, 70 weeks of years, sorry. And here's what it says. It says, 70 weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city. In other words, there's going to be 490 years of waiting um, until um, it's fully fulfilled, till God's presence finally comes and what's it going to do? It says because he's going to finish transgression. He's going to make an end to sin. He's going to make reconciliation between himself and between man. He's going to bring in everlasting righteousness. So when we look at the world that we see now, it's not going to be like that. It's going to be restored into its full beauty with the king reigning, not in heaven, but here on earth. And we will be part of that. And he also, the angel said, to seal up this vision and prophecy and to anoint the Holy One. And as you, as you read through that, I mean, it, it talks, doesn't it, that, that that's Jesus that's is the King. Who was it that did away, who put an end to sin? Well, it was Jesus on the cross. Amen. Nothing less than that could do it. Amen. The angel goes on to tell him and says, therefore, know and understand that from the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem until the Messiah, Jesus, comes, there shall be seven and 62 weeks, or in other words, 483 years, the gap between the two. Now, there are lots of the different interpretations of this particular scripture, but mine is, uh, the one that I probably most resonate with, is that that takes us to Palm Sunday when Jesus enters the city of Jerusalem and is received as king. It will be something that you probably need to look up for yourself and decide uh, what you think about it. But certainly for me, that seems to be the best explanation uh, that Jesus is the one. And yet there was one more week left uh, of years still to use, a period of seven years, and that really is talking about revelation and the end. The, at the end of that time, that's when Jesus would return. That's when everything will be put right. That's when the king will fully reign here on the earth. And that's when every eye will see him. Every knee will bow and you will know him fully. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm looking forward to that. But, you know, Isaiah uh, chapter 46 says this. It says that God declares the end from the beginning and from the ancient times, not yet saying. He says, my counsel shall stand and I will accomplish all of my purposes. We might not understand, you know, all of the complexities and might not have, you know, the complete uh, truth that we, what I think but what we do know, God says, I will accomplish my purposes and I am going to rule and to reign. My kingdom will be established here on earth as it is uh, in heaven. The next part of um, our, our story really is about the king who is misunderstood. Uh, so going back to uh, the Matthew passage, Matthew uh, 21 uh, verse 6, it says the disciples did as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey, they brought the colt, they laid the clothes on the colt. And then it, as they came in, the crowd, this is where they're, they're acting out. But yet their hearts are a long, long way away. They laid their clothes on the floor, took their coats off. They laid the palm branches on the floor, welcoming, as James said, the conquering king. And yet he wasn't on a white stallion, he was on a donkey on 
riding humbly in. And those who went before him, they started to shout out, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Their words are good, aren't they? But what is it they're asking for? They're saying, save us now from the present. Because they've no real idea about Jesus' mission and purpose. They'd maybe heard it and Jesus talk about it, but yet they did not at that point receive it. They wanted to be delivered from the Romans, who were the ruling power, and for Jesus to set up his kingdom, get rid of them, and then put uh, himself in. And it said, when he had come into Jerusalem and the city, all the city was moved, and they said, who is this? Who is this? And that question comes down to us this morning, doesn't it? Who is our king? Who is your king? And do you truly know him? And here, verse 11, just finally says it, doesn't it? It says, so the multitude said, this is Jesus. Not the son of God who came to save the world, but the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. Can you see what they've done? They've reduced him to just a man. You see, they expect very present solutions. What did Jesus come to bring? An eternal solution with his kingdom. They expected Jesus to come to conquer the Romans and to put on a crown, a ruler's crown. But what did he come to, to do? He came and he put on a crown of thorns because he was going to suffer and die. They expected him to just play the game of thrones, didn't they? And just get rid of the ruling powers and put himself on it. But you see, God's way is not man's way. God's way is not our way. God's way certainly wasn't their way. If they had their way, it would have been very different. You see, didn't Jesus come to defeat the powers of evil, of darkness, and all of the things that are the problems with our world right now? Did he not come to do that? And can you imagine if Jesus had responded to them and gone in and taken the the power from the Roman emperor or the Roman empire, what would have been happening? Yes, he would have been ruling, But the problem, the greatest problem would have still been the same. And that problem is the heart of man. You see, we can be ruled, can't we, by a government. They can make the laws. But we don't necessarily keep them unless our heart really is wanting to do it. They can threaten us with prison to impose them. But that doesn't seem to work either, does it? There has to be a change in the heart of the people, doesn't there? And you know, you see this, don't you, in in the temptation of Jesus, isn't it? When the devil offered him all of the kingdoms of the world, there and then. That's yours, Jesus. You take it. You rule it. And why did Jesus refuse it? Because it would have still left the problem, the heart of man, the sin, the rebellion in the heart of man that had had to be dealt with. They expected a king to rule. And what did they get? The Lamb of God who came to offer his life as a sacrifice. The substitute who died in your place and mine for your sin and for mine to set us free. Who is Jesus to you? Is he that king with a crown of thorns or some other? Don't just welcome him this morning with our words, but welcome him with our hearts turned fully towards him. The last section of this uh, passage is really where the king is revealed. Verse 12 says this, it says, Jesus went into the temple of God and drove out all of those who bought and sold in the temple overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those that sold doves. 
Apparently, as you come into Jerusalem, I've never been, so I can't 100% say this is true, but the, the road that comes in, it's got a top, a, a junction at the top. If you turn one way, you go to the Roman fort that was there. And if you go the other way, you go to the temple. And this is why Jesus is revealed. He didn't go to the Roman fort that people expected him to go to. He went to the temple. And what did he do there when he was there? Well, he cleansed it, didn't he? Of all the rubbish that was in the way, all of the things that were blocking people from accessing God. And he clears it all away and tells them, my house should be called a house of prayer. And then uh, verse 14 says, then the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. It became a place where the king and his presence is where he needed to be, in the temple. You see, that's just a picture, isn't it, of what God wants to do in your life this morning and in the lives of every human being across this world. Because you see, we don't have a temple now, do we? The temple in Jerusalem has been, has been knocked down. They may, they, there has been some talk of rebuilding it, yes. But you see, the reason why it was knocked down is because God's presence doesn't want to just dwell in a building. He wants to dwell in us. That's been his greatest desire all along, that God wants to dwell with man. He wants to dwell with you. He wants to dwell with me. He wants to dwell with everybody. And he can't do that if he's just in a building. And that's why in Corinthians, doesn't it, it says, do you not know that your bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit, that God dwells in there. When we come to Christ, he comes and he enters in and he dwells within us. That's where he wants to be. That's where Jesus wants to be king, king of your heart, not just king over the creation. Because where does change need to happen? It needs to happen in the heart of man. How did he do that? Well, Jesus met us in in our place of suffering, of sorrow, of brokenness and failure. The king with the crown of thorns died for us to make that possible. The Apostle Paul, he prayed a prayer for this very thing that we should know. He said... For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his Spirit. Where? In the inner person. And that he would grant you, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith and being rooted and grounded you may be able to comprehend with all of the saints what is the width and the length and the depth and the height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with the fullness of God isn't that what God wants to fill his people with the fullness of God. But what is it that gets in the way? I guess it's a bit like that temple, isn't it? There's stuff that's in the way of that happening. God has been desperate to be king over your heart. Will you allow him to clear that stuff out of the way? And come to him, that you might have the fullness of God. Many of us have been Christians for many years, but I hope none of us can actually say we've arrived and that we have all of the fullness of God. There's always much more to have. There's always much more to know. And can we say today that that king, he's my king, and we know him. 
Amen. I'm just going to ask the uh, worship team to come. We're just going to take uh, a little bit of time to respond as um, I was praying over this uh, this morning, the Lord just really enforced upon me, and I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about me here, that there's rubbish in my life that he wants to cleanse, he wants to, to heal, he wants to remove it so that I might have more of the fullness So Holy Spirit, we ask you to come this morning. We acknowledge your presence with us. But we ask that you will come to help us to remove the rubbish that hinders us. That we might be clean vessels for your Spirit to fill us, to be welcomed by you. Okay. We'll remain seated. to search through your heart this morning. What does he want to do?
as we were singing the maybe that the Lord say that there are some where Jesus is in the sphere of your life but not on the throne For some as well that may never feel worthy enough or good enough. Remember that when Jesus threw out the money changers, the people who were excluded from coming near came and Jesus healed them. The blind and the lame who were never allowed to go much beyond the outer courts, the edges, came and sat with the King of Kings who healed and restored them. Thank you. So just as a sign of our sincerity this morning, to enact the things that Jesus has spoken to us about. If you're sincere this morning, I would just ask that you stand where you are. I hope we're all standing, I'm standing. Why don't you join me and stand? Lord, we pray this morning, we thank you that you are King of Kings. And we ask, Lord, that that you will help us, Lord, that you will come, Lord, and clear the rubbish away, Lord, from our lives, Lord. Lord, that we might enjoy and know the fullness of you dwelling and of your presence within us. That, Lord, as a church, Lord, we might know more of that indwelling presence as we gather together, Lord, because we long, Lord, in these days, Lord, to be, to just, to, to know you, we pray, Heavenly Father, for your grace, for your forgiveness, Lord, in the times that we've failed, for the things that we have thought, the things that we may have said, the things that we have done, the things that we have neglected. Lord, we confess those before you. And we ask, Lord, for that cleansing power that came from you with your crown of thorns upon that cross, that you'll renew us, Lord, in a right relationship. You'll set us free, as that song says, Lord. That we might live in a different way, Lord. We might witness in a different way. Lord, we might be filled with your presence and love in a different way. Because we need you more, Lord. We need you more. We ask all these things in your precious name, Jesus. Amen. We'll remain standing and we're just going to sing our last, our last
So may we know the indwelling Christ, dwelling deep within our hearts through our faith. And may we know that we're rooted, we're anchored, we're grounded in that love. And may we know that love of Christ which passes all knowledge and that we may leave here filled with all of the fullness of God and the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit remain with us all forevermore. Amen.